All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Cloak Conscious. I'm doing today's reading for my Aries friends and family. Um, star, star, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Signs or any aspects uh, that are being amplified due to the transit. <laughs> I, I said star. You know what? Technically, the sun is a star, so I was gonna say star, star, moon, rising. Anyways. Let's get started on this. I'm already stumbling on my words. And this, I'm sure you're curious to know who this pretty girl is. This is Minzy's. She's a model. You see that? She's the star of the show. Okay, let's get started. What does Aries have going on for this upcoming week? Okay. <clears throat> Let's start. Chariot. Something's coming your way in your direction. Or leaving. Don't know. Something's coming and going. Alright. We have two of ghosts. This is the two of cups. Feels like abundance is on its way. Love, connection, um, reconnection between you and somebody. Which is really good. I have a cough drop in, so if you hear me clanking that thing around, um, I have an addiction to cough drops. Anytime my throat gets sore, I just, I, I'm popping them. Anyway, so we have the death card. We'll see. We'll, see. we'll get into the details. Don't get all riled up. This may not be a bad thing. Um, we have the four of pumpkins. Ten of pumpkins. Pumpkins are um, pentacles, by the way. The emperor. It's the first time it's come out, actually. And the six of pumpkins. Okay. All right. So far, let me refer to my little booklet. Just double checking. It's the first time I'm using this deck. Okay, so overall, this is really good. Um, so you have chariot. Things are coming your way in your direction. Usually, it's fast and accelerated, um, and it's love. Two of Cups. It's a divine union. It feels like an, a manifestation is coming to alignment in your life. However, you have Death card here. And I believe that you had to let something go in order to get this manifestation. Just because whatever this was that you were holding on to before was preventing you from receiving this alignment. And what's interesting is what is the first thing you look up i just want to know I'm, I'm curious so whatever it is that you're looking at that you feel drawn to i suggest you probably look it up and see um what the spiritual significance of it is so that way you can see what it is that is dying for you or that you're letting go of detaching from but I first saw the Ankh. You see the Ankh? I think it's religion. Or some type of spiritual significance. So if it was something of that nature, like I'm just going to use an example. Because two of cups, you can see is two people coming into union. It's alignment. It's a relationship. It's a love situation coming in. But... Either they come into your life and they make you realize that spiritually, like they could be really spiritual. Because I feel like they are affecting you. Whatever this is, it's affecting you. It's not like you're helping them find God. It, it feels like maybe 
I want to say that they're coming into your life and they're changing the way you perceive like religion and spirituality and um, your connection with God because a lot of people don't realize like that they were just born a certain religion like they were born into it um, you can't help that but and I think that although you may or may not be attached to this identity because that's what it is it's an identity because a religion should be a set of practices not an identity so if you're not doing the practices of said religion then it's an identity for you and it's not a, it, it holds no spiritual significance for you i'm just saying like i'm not calling you out but that, that's just how it works so i think that this person is maybe helping you see that helping you see that it's the practice that's more important than the identity and recognizing that the words that you say hold less value than your than your actions um i know this sounds like very specific because but I, it makes sense to me because right here you see that he's planting seeds and pumpkins are pentacles so he's planting seeds this guy under the moon with the stars so he's planting seeds and then ten of pumpkins they come they they fully grow look he dude you see that he's planting seeds there's pumpkins that he puts on the ground and on the tree and then look they grow on the tree the next year so he's he or she um they're planting these seeds, helping you come into alignment with spirituality. I know too, a ghost, it's like relationship or cups is relationship. But I do think that it's probably somebody helping you. But two of cups is also alignment. Anytime I see the number two, I think of alignment. Um, it makes me think of, you know, manifestations um, matching your energy. I mean, it's all about matching energy. It's not necessarily like abundance, I should say, because it could be abundance if you were exerting that energy, but if you're not, that's not the energy you're going to get. It's all about alignment and matching your energy. Whatever the situation is, it's reciprocating you. And I think that whatever this is that's coming in is trying to help you recognize that your energy is not mat matching your manifestation and that you're just speaking you, you're trying to speak into existence without trying without convincing the universe that you mean it because you're not practicing it because you claim this identity but you're not practicing it like it came to my head like my uh my family is like very very mormon and my dad calls it like, or my parents call it Jack Mormon, where it's like, you're born Mormon, you're Mormon, but you don't actually practice a religion. I don't know. I'm not, I've never been raised religious, so I have no idea if that's a thing, if you guys know what I'm talking about, or if that's just something my family made up. Um, but it's essentially that same thing. But to me, I felt like it, this came from like a spiritual perspective, only because <clears throat> you can't manifest, you can't plant seeds and manifest what you want without being in alignment with what you want. Because if you are the biggest hater with negative energy and all you do is hate on other people for having money, for being pretty, for being skinny or whatever it is, and you want those things, you want the things that you're hating people for, what makes you think you're, you're planting seeds to get that? And you're asking the universe, you're journaling, you're doing all this stuff. But your actions, your practicing, what you're practicing isn't reciprocating. It isn't in alignment with you. So you're just attracting the things that your energy is saying. And I think that this situation that's coming in, <laughs> it's going to run you over. It's going to hit you with this card, with this hearse. The hearse and the death card. <laughs> I just find the humor in this. But I think that it's going to kind of knock some sense into you and say, hey, you are not in alignment with the things that you, you say you want. And it's going to put you into alignment, which is great. Um, so we have the uh, emperor here. 
and the six of pentacles. So you're gonna be able to get what you want. You're gonna have to use discernment. You're gonna have the power to manifest it. And in my opinion, I do think you will be fruitful. I do think you'll be fruitful because of this 10 of pentacles here. I do think that you're, the seeds you plant, they will grow. They may not be fast because it does take time, but you're also gonna share what it is that you've learned with other people, which is really good. Um, you're not selfish, you're not gatekeeping um, what it is that you've learned from the universe on how to attract and manifest your abundance. Um, and you may, may, you may help people in certain situations um, if it is a religious thing, you know, like you're clinging on to it. If it's not, and if it's like, let's just say you're looking at the vulture and you realize that you were like an energy vampire, like you were sucking on other people's, like wanting, wanting their leftovers or like, you know, like if you have a wealthy friend, you're like being friends with them because they have money and resources and etc. It's like, are you being that? Are you being that friend? It doesn't mean that you don't like them genuinely, but you also are taking advantage of the situation. Or is it religion? Or is it these flowers where it's like, because flowers are all about growing and blooming and putting times into things. Times into stuff. But are you growing too big where you're not letting other people grow with you? Are you being selfish with the sunlight, with the water? You know, is it the butterfly with the skull on it? So it's just like, look into this and, and whatever it was you were attached to, if it was the moon, if it was Saturn right there, the tree, whatever it was that you like were drawn to, I kind of feel like that's more of your message. Um, Cause this is unique, this is unique to you. Um, but I do feel like when you recognize what it was that you weren't in alignment with, you weren't practicing what you were preaching, put it that way. And it's like, if you were preaching certain things, you were cherry picking what you were preaching. So that way you didn't have to practice the other things you claim you believe, the other things you claim you represent. Um, and that's okay. I mean, not all of us take, take it seriously. I mean, like, if you want to take religion seriously, like, you'd probably be a, a monk, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you believed in modesty, you would be modest. Like, if you believed all of those things, you would do those things. You wouldn't just do it to the extent. And in, you don't have to shame yourself for not being 100% by the book or textbook style, like, fitting, putting yourself in that box. You were never, ever meant to be put in a box. You were meant to learn about the box, the limits of inside the box, outside the box, and everything about the box. The color, the texture, the smell, the size. And it doesn't mean you have to be in it. It just means that, you know, you be yourself while learning about it in this journey of alignment. Because if you put yourself in a box, you're just restricting yourself. Because what if your abundance is outside the box? And you're mad that you're not getting your abundance. And you see everybody else getting your abundance. Or the abundance that you want. And you know why? It's because you put yourself in a box. And, and this is coming in to tell you, you don't need to be in the box. So however long it takes you is your decision. You may feel guilty of coming outside of the box because you shamed everybody else for not being in the box. And now that you want to be outside the box, you feel guilty about it. But it's okay. Have compassion. You know, and if people ask you, you just take accountability. Hey, I recognize that I was a little too, I don't know what I was going through, but I see your side, I see your perspective, and I'm going to, going to experience some things. I'm going to be a little bit more open-minded. I'm not going to place judgment. I'm not going to place opinions or beliefs or anything like that. I'm not going to have a box. I'm not going to create division between me and my abundance and you and your abundance and anything of that nature I'm gonna learn through experimentation and there is no shame in that that's why we have scientists that's how we discovered some of the greatest things in the world imagine if we never ever discovered things because we just stuck to the status quo you know how life would be it would be crazy 
women wouldn't have jobs. Women would have to be at home. Women would be beat. Women would, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just using women as an example. Imagine men. They're not allowed to be vulnerable. They're not allowed to have emotions unless they're angry. They have to be vicious. They have to be muscular. And it's like, these status quo things are not healthy. So I think when you recognize that some of these things, maybe that you were, this box that you had, whatever this is, this box could be anything for any religion, culture, ethnicity, political stance. Um, I think when you recognize that this box is unhealthy and that's what's preventing you from having your abundance, then you can receive your abundance. It'll come into alignment. It's there, it's waiting for you but you gotta do the work. And also, I do wanna emphasize, because I didn't know this until now, but I really do feel like it's religion, because he's got the ankh right there. Yeah. So I do think that this is some religious upbringing of some sort. It's a spiritual thing. I think, you know, you may have thought something for a while. Even if you're an open-minded person, you may completely change your perspective right now and realize that your abundance is not how other people are doing it. Just because other people have the abundance that you want because they practice a certain belief, let's just say, you know, um, that doesn't mean that it's right for you or that it's right in general. I know this message is getting a little long, but I just, I feel compelled to tell you. Okay, well, that's your message for today. Let me get some advice. What advice do you have for my Aries? Okay, we have kangaroo. It says gratitude. Be grateful for all that you are blessed with. Okay. Okay. And dear, pathfinder. Trust your instincts to guide you through this situation. Yeah. I, you, you're going to have to change courses. You're going to have to detach from this identity. You're going to have to... Um, oh, be open-minded. That's really the message that I feel like we're getting here. It's like you got to be even more open-minded than you were. You may have been open-minded, and the universe is saying, no, more, more, you know? So that is the advice for you. I hope that it resonates and that it works out in your favor um please like comment and subscribe let me know how your week goes um and let me know if it works out in your favor because i'm hoping it does and have a great rest of your day love you guys